Hi, my name's John. Welcome to part three in a series of short videos showing the basic operations that can be done on the metal working lathe. In this episode, or this instalment, I'm going to do facing. The facing cut on the end of a round bar, which is probably the most common process that's done on any lathe machining operation. Um, possibly do centre drilling as well as the facing cut. That's enough talking. I'll bring the camera in. Let's get started. I've got a piece of round bar here and the end's been cut on a band saw. It's not bad but it certainly isn't a good finish and it isn't square to the end of the workpiece. So the first thing we're going to do or the first operation on most lathe jobs is to face the end of that bar through. I'll bring the camera on this side and you can be able to see it's, it's got quite a lot of run on it. Where you can see there it's not running true. So once we take a cut across there, that face will be absolutely perfectly 90 degrees to that face there. It'll also hopefully be flat and smooth. The tool I'm going to use is a high speed steel tool. I generally use tip tools, but for a lot of these videos I'll use high speed steel because that's what most people have in their workshops. That's a home ground tool, I ground it. I'm not going to show out the grain tools, there's loads and loads of videos on grain and lathe tools. We're only going to use the very tip of the tool, so we need to turn it round so we've got an angle between the tip of the tool and the piece of work at about 15 degrees, which is about that there. Then we need to set the tool on centre height. I'll bring the camera around and we'll have a look and see what, it, what height it's at. It actually doesn't look too bad, we'll take a cut and then we'll be able to set the tool up from there. I've got the lathe running at 640 RPM. This is inch and a half steel bar. So we'll carefully bring the tool out so it's touching there, interrupted cut. Take a little cut on it. There you can see there, it's left a little pip on the end of the workpiece. That's because the tool is slightly below centre height. And we'll lift it up slightly. Still too low. This is possibly the most accurate way of setting up a tool to be on centre height. Right, it's taking it all off and wind it out. It's just about all the way there. There's one little bit at the edge there, so we'll take another cut. Right, so that's put quite a decent finish on and there's no pip in the centre so that means the tool is dead on centre height. Now that the tool is adjusted properly I'm going to lock up the check nut and that means that tool is set so I can take it off and put it on knowing it'll be at the right height to do the job. So that tool will be taken off and that tool will be used put back on and it goes exactly on the centre height. This is the hand wheel that moves the carriage on this lathe and it has got no graduations on at all. So if you wanted to take off a specific amount from that face, there's two or three different methods you can use. I'll show them now when I've got it all set up like this. The easiest method for me is to use a digital readout. So I'll bring the tool in until it just touches, zero everything off, and I can put my cut on which I want to put on it. Point two five zero a millimetre, which is there. 
So that's going to take off a quarter of a mil. Exactly a quarter of a mil. I've got a dial gauge here on the magnetic mount. So what I can do is I can turn in the tool until it just touches and back it up from the job. This one happens to be Imperial, but I have got a metric one as well. And suppose I wanted to put 10, 20, 25, the 30 thou cut on, that would be a 30 thou cut. Quite simple. The lathe compound slide has got a graduated hand wheel. People often wonder why the compound slide is set at that angle. That's the angle you use for screw cutting. That's the reason it's set like that. If you loosen it off and turn it to 90 degrees, parallel with the job, I'll do that now. Just two nuts under here. We'll turn it like that and it's got a it's got a scale on there. We'll set that to zero. You would use a clock here to get it absolutely spot on, but it's basically not bad at that. The graduations on the compound slide are metric because it's a metric lathe. There's a little bit of movement there that's called backlash. When you do that, nothing happens. So you turn it forward till the compound slide moves, and then you would zero. Set the zero, bring the tool in until it touches, then you wind it away from the workpiece. The carriage on this lathe is a big beefy affair and it doesn't tend to push back when you're taking the lights facing cuts. On a smaller lathe you'd have to lock up the carriage. There's actually a lock and boot under there that locks off the main carriage, stops it moving. So when you take your face and cut, all it's going to do is go straight through and not move back. Then the coat is simply put on using the compound slide. 0 0.25, that's actually 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, that's half a mil. Right, the sword set up now to take the half mil face and cut. That's reasonable. Quite often the next operation is to drill a hole through there or to put a centre in to put some tailstock support on if it was a longer bar. You need to support it, we'll be covering that later. But I am going to use a centre drill and put a pilot hole in there ready to drill a hole. Centre drills come in various sizes from little ones to great big ones. They've all got one ambition in life and that's to snap off in the hole. There's a centre drill there and a little adapter I made to no drill and that just goes into the tail stock and I use that all the time, it just saves messing about with a chuck. So mount this into the tail stock of the lathe and centre drill that. Okay so that would simply go in there and that would be used to drill the hole or to start the hole or you could put a chuck in like that and then put a Sent a drill into the end of there. Make sure the tape was nice and clean. And that's all it takes, that's it locked in. I'm going to wind the lathe carriage right up as far as I can, but making sure I've got plenty of clearance between the chuck, the tool post, and the carriage. The idea is that when you bring a tail stock up, you've got as a little of the actual tail stock mandrel poking out as possible that gives the least amount of deflection makes it more accurate so all we're going to do is put a little starter hole in the end of there a little bit of cutting paste or lubricant or oil or whatever your favourite poison is once again I'm running at 600 rpm See when it started there, there was no deflection at all, it went straight in because the lathe has been lined up nice and accurately. 
but you've got to be careful you don't snap the little tip off in the hole. Right, so now we've got a nice little starter hole. You have to start the drill in or to put a, a centre in to give it some support. And I've turned the spin speed up to a thousand. I'm going to take a cut going out over there just to see what sort of finish I can get with a high speed tool. Right, and that's pretty good. That's nice. Right, so we've done a little bit about facing. I'm just going to keep this video short, like bite-sized pieces, because people seem to be able to watch 10 minutes of me, but any more than that seems to be enough for them. In the next one, we'll probably do some turning. That's facing, turning is taken off that face there. And we'll just see how things go. If you want us to cover anything that I haven't done or you'd like us to cover something in the future, just send us an email and I'll see what can be done. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.